Okay, everyone, thank you. Um, I'd like to start today with uh, Jackie's question the other day, why do we do what we do? And I thought about it, and uh, I thought, this is why I do it. <laughs> 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 to be honest, it's, uh, yeah, it is. It's a little running steamboat. And, uh, you know, I, I like doing a nice job and making people's houses look good and all, but I think the bottom line is that's why I do it, so I can get back to there. And uh, I hope that's okay, but uh, it's, it's pretty much the truth. So, um, the other day at the, uh, the um, happy hour, uh, what was that one-on-one -on -one that we had? Mm -hmm. um, Deborah was sitting next to me and she said, uh, Nurture yourself and you nurture your business. And bells went off my head. Oh. I thought this would be <laughs> Go see. <laughs> I'm going to nurture myself <laughs> and nurture my business. Uh, I didn't tell my wife that yet. That was comfortable. But I thought that is a great, a great perspective. <laughs> it works for me. So, uh, anyway, so um, I, I do a good job and, and do the best I can and stuff. So I think. And it all starts with a phone call. Someone will call and say, I got your name. You paid it in my friend's house, or I paid it for him. Last, last night I did a bit, painted the house in 01, and she thought it held up well. She's moving and wants me to paint it again. And uh, so it, it started with that, and then uh, it moves on to uh, colors. We look at colors, work out colors, uh, give them some suggestions, leave them with decks and stuff. And uh, these little folders uh, for uh, staining decks and stuff. Got these little tools to use, and um, it kind of is a little entree into the, the job. It just flows right on in. They get involved with this, and like it just moves on. They give them a price. Hopefully, they define uh, what they want painted. That's always the thing that I challenge clients to tell me <coughs> what they want to have done. Well, they'll say, "Well, we think we want to do this. Maybe not the ceiling. Probably the trim. I don't know what color." You know? So, and they go, well, how much will it cost? If you don't do the ceiling, it'll be different. <laughs> so, they like, so we got to find a job and work through that and stuff. And do that. And then uh, next I was going to show just some pictures of the work um, that I've done. And then um, if you can think about projects maybe you have around your house, things you'd like to do or have, are doing this uh, summer, we can talk about that. Get some pointers and stuff. Exciting things going on. So this was a little old house. It's kind of, I don't know what they call it, shotgun house. It's really narrow and long. Um, it was in Denver. I painted for a friend. I usually don't work in Denver, but it, it worked out fine. And you can see here the railing, uh, the railings all kind of peeling there and stuff. And I'll take a house like this and hose it off, and the nozzle and the pressure nozzle, and it'll take a lot of paint off. It's a nice way to get paint on and see where your trouble areas are. And then uh, that will need a further scraping and uh, priming. And there was a lot of caulking around there. If there's cracks and stuff where water can get in. It's good to crack the uh, caulking. And then it keeps the, the, the wood in better shape. And then afterwards, um, they're all painted up there, the railings. And then she wanted to do some uh, stuff here with these beams. It's a little dark here in the photo. And then there's some beams in there, too. And this was a case, too, where her sister got involved and said, paint those are orange, too. And then, well, I did. And she said, no, it's good. It was a couple coats each way, but it was okay uh, for a friend to help her out with that. And then the orange door. Oh, and if you look here, it's this little porch swing. It's kind of green. Mm -hmm. And then it went to this aqua color. It was really cool looking with the little orange. And her little shotgun shack. Oh, thanks, Dio. Her little shotgun shack. Oh, that's better, yeah. Turn, it's just so cute. She's really happy with this. Yeah. And then on the back side, uh, these are two pictures uh, kind of put together. And she had all this peeling and uh, kind of rotten stuff there, but it was solid enough to uh, to scrape and caulk and prime, and then it turned into that. And the little uh, steps here got a stain, stuff, kind of spruced them up. So that was kind of a fun project. It's nice to see things improve. And, uh, that is one little house. Exactly. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. But I did, I did the inside of it too. Yeah. So, oh, there's a, I was, I jumped too far ahead. Okay, so this, 
is a house I'm working on now um, out at Lake Valley. And they have all these coffer ceilings. I guess the people were from the East Coast that built the house. And I was calling there with them. It's really quite attractive. And now um, I'm painting the walls one color and the ceilings another. Well, um, an interior design person just actually suggested they put on a metallic paint. So we did this uh, copper uh, look here. This part of the ceiling is white, and that's copper, and this is kind of light green, kind of like a white trim. And it's all turning out pretty nice. It's a really nice house. There's another picture of the dining room. That's looking west, it right across the 93 there, and up on the hill is old stage there. Good perspective. And then in the dining room here, they have a different kind of coffer of ceiling there, but uh, they got two layers of crown gold. And uh, they wanted to do white here and there, and then the wall color up on that part, which is, I kind of wouldn't have thought of that, but it looks pretty sharp. It, it accentuates the coffer. And then after they saw the brass in the other room, they went, yeah, let's do it in here too, the, the metallic. So that's kind of a fun project I'm working on right now. They're going to switch out that light, the style light. We just got it in the mail yesterday. That's Rudy. He's a dog in the neighborhood, and that's an old deck. Um, I do this deck every year or two. Um, she puts pots and waters and stuff in Rudy on it. And uh, it's kind of worn. So it had been a couple of years here. And uh, last time I sanded it, she really liked it, so we did it again. And Saturday, I sanded, ran in a sander in the morning and uh, got a couple of coats on it. And it was done, so he, yeah. my son helped move on pots and stuff. It turned out quite nicely. Quite a difference. Yeah. And this is, is ideal. I don't know if you do this yourself, but if you notice it's low for one for lifting the sand off too. And then uh, it doesn't have any railings or stairs. <laughs> so it's ideal for it was pretty slick. And she had a little front porch too. And, uh, same same treatment. The sign says wet paint. Yeah. So Oh, that cool ramp there is for her yeah. mother to come visit. Not for the dog. Not for in a wheelchair to come up. I tried to hand cut in one color to another, and mm -hmm. that didn't work very well. So I came back across and put paint tank down, mm -hmm. and that didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to comment that, that we get a nice sharp line, so like we saw in that scene. Right. That I did. I did that with uh, um, a technique. We missed that one. That was the ugliest house. Oh uh, yeah. I finally yeah. finished it. You got to do the bottom. It yeah. finally got done. Yeah. yeah. I did the bottom, and then it didn't match the top, so I did the top again. So yeah. anyway. And it's no longer it. the ugliest house. No, yeah. I think it well, still it's still is. No. And that's <laughs> the front door. It's the front door. You know, this house doesn't have any leaves. It's, it's got shelf. some potential. It's got some potential. And that deck is just going to be in place. Did it find the front door? Because I thought that was a garage door. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great inside what Barbie did, too. So that's <coughs> that with a nice clean line. So you take your tape. And you put it down where you want it to go, and then right on the edge of it, there's a thing called frog tape. I haven't used it, but it's a little clear. And you put it down on the edge of the tape. But I use caulk, a, paint, a painter's caulk, not real expensive caulk, but just painter's caulk, because it's uh, not as so overlap into the area you're going to paint on the edge of the tape. Right. You put it right on the edge of the tape, very light, very, very light. Like it almost, you wipe it so you can't even see it. And then, and then that, that fills the little gaps where the mm -hmm. go under. Then we pull the tape off, what, leaves that little bit of cloth on the paint Right, surface. it's so small, yeah, you don't see it. And then uh, you paint it. And then after the paint is not totally dry, it's pretty dry, you polish it. It's all, everything's kind of soft. If you wait too long, you can pull the paint. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, can you also paint the edge of the tape with the color of the paint that's underneath the tape. For instance, you've got white ceiling there with copper paint coming down to it. If you paint tape it, paint that edge white first, yes. and then paint down over the top of that with your copper, that creates the straight edge of the, right. of the tape. Yeah, that's the way I did that, yeah. Painted the white first, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's all done, that edge is all done. Then you just work with the, yeah, either, you can go either way, but it worked 
best with that because uh, it, would, it would cover it. If I get a copper on the way, it would cover as well. Yeah. Do you have a specific brand of paint that you use unless somebody requests you to use something else? I mean, are you a Sherwin Williams guy or a Benjamin Moore guy? I use the bear a lot. I use Sherwin Williams, Benjamin Moore, it's okay. I was thinking about that before the meeting and uh, yeah, you know, you use their better paints and they're all pretty good. They're all competing, they, you know, they're in business to sell good products. So, yeah. Um, the, the bear works pretty good. Um, it rates well in consumer reports. Uh, they tell people that. So, that I really so you always awesome. say that you, that you use brushes instead of sprayers. What's, why do you use brushes instead of sprayers? Well, it started because I didn't want to wear a suit and a yeah, uh, mask all day. You know, when you're spraying, you've got to suit up. So, uh, and the painter I worked for brushed and rolled, so. And then I just I keep doing that. I don't know, where was it? Uh, I looked at the house the other day and they said it lasted so long, I think, because you brushed and rolled it. Uh, you didn't spray it, yeah. Yeah, I was just in a job the other day and the client was saying that. You do, you do it come in more physical contact with the surface. You're looking at you're touching it. You're not standing back spraying. And I'll do the houses, repaint them, and the whole spider webs are all painted over. So they're mm -hmm. all sprayed over, you know. It's like, I was worried to see one like that. Would you get an air compressor and just pull all that crap out? Or do you just physically make a room and pull out any spider action? Yeah, if there's these spider webs and stuff, they come down pretty well, yeah. You know, there it is. Seven times stronger than steel. Paint the hands. Now you can there they just wipe right off the legs. Your hand. You know, you might be afraid of spider webs now, but after years of touching them, it's like no. Okay, Mike. Mike, I have a last question. I have a deck that's pressure treated wood, mm -hmm. so it does reject water and, and snow and stuff. But it doesn't look so nice anymore. It's 10 years old from the sun. And also, they use twisties, but they keep back and up. And so there's a, I have their voice on the really down. Cool. So you really could use, and there's a, been a lot of cupping and stuff. Mm -hmm. kind of, I think we have to hard to use a sander because you're going to be hitting all those nails and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. And also, I didn't know if it would accept the stain since it's rejecting water and stuff. Is there anything that can be done that improves? It's like green, who's green wood? Yeah, you can see that. Over, it's it probably will turn out over, over time. Yeah. And uh, when your nails heads come up, pull them out with a little uh, under bar. Put a screw in. Oh, yeah. Just cool. do that every time they come up. Just so you don't have to keep it. That's a great issue. Pull them up. It probably won't keep going up because the screws are rounded. So but on the standing of the company, it's probably even more of a system. You can flip it lower, it'll start to look pretty funny. And then you can just put on like the stem stain. There's a treatment here you can use uh, to brighten it and get it kind of like a natural. It works pretty well. If you can add a product on the water, add water to find the one, use it kind of strong. Yeah, it kind of does that. They don't do it too well, so this looks nice. But it does bring it back to a new look. Oh, it's right. And, um, and then just use the decking stain and the cure fields. You have these uh, toners that are really light, keep it nice wood looking, and then you go to the semi transparent and it's all over. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Yeah.